Hello, my name is Kishmani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishmani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra, math, algebra word problems. Today we'll begin with problem number 71. Problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We are told that a man, a man walks. Yes, I know it's my accent. It's okay. A man walks a journey, or rather a man makes a journey, he makes a journey of j kilometers. We are further told that he travels the first c kilometers by car. He travels the first c kilometers by car. His total journey is j kilometers. He travels the next p kilometers by plane. By plane. The following t kilometers following t kilometers it should not be plain it should be train t for train and he finishes his journey on foot the question simply is how many kilometers did he walk on the foot well, let's see let's see well we know that he travels c kilometers by car c kilometers by car he travels p kilometers by plane he travels t kilometers by train and his total journey that he made was j kilometers which means if we were to take the total number of kilometers that he traveled minus the three segments the segment that he finished by car, by plane and the train if we take away those three numbers from the total the remainder whatever it is must be the number of kilometers that he must have gone on foot that's what it is the number of miles that he traveled total was j minus this quantity right here is how much he traveled on foot that's all. That's how simple it is. Nothing to it. Straightforward. J minus this quantity. C plus P plus T. And if you were to open the parenthesis, then it will be J minus C minus P plus minus T. Let's do the next one. Let's do the next one. Number 72. Mike eats M candies per hour. Number 72. We are told Mike eats M candies per hour. We are also told that his brother eats B candies per hour. B for brother, M for Michael. Michael eats M candies some quantities per hour. B, my, his brother eats B candies per hour. How many candies will they consume? How many candies will they consume in each hour? Very simple, very straightforward problem. Since Michael is consuming M number of candies per hour and his brother is consuming B candies per hour together, Together, they consume. Together, they consume. How many per hour? He eats M. His brother eats B. Together, they consume B M plus B candies per hour. Well, if this is how many candies they eat in one hour. In two hours, they will eat twice as much. In three hours, they will eat three times the amount. In ten hours, they will eat ten times the amount. Therefore, therefore, in each hour, they will eat. They will eat. In two hours, had it been two, it would be two times this quantity. In three hours, it will be three times the quantity. In each hour, they will simply eat h times this quantity right here, which I'm going to write as b plus m. Because you're always supposed to write the alphabetical order. So H, H times B plus M. Candies is how many they will eat in H hours. Now, if the question was asking how long, if they, have a, if they have 300 candies, how long, how long will 300 candies last? Well, how long do you suppose 300 candies will last? They're eating B plus M in one hour, so if, 
Let's put a number here if you like, if it makes it easier, let's pretend m is, m is 3 and b is 2, in which case 3 plus 2 is, 3 plus 2 is 5, instead of 300, I'm going to make it something simpler. Let's pretend 25 candies, 25 candies, how long will 25 candies last? By plugging in numbers here, for m for 3 and b for 2, that's 5, they're eating 5 candies per hour, if they're eating 5 candies per hour, how long will 25 candies last? 25 candies will last 5 hours. Again, because I'm getting 5 and 5, let's put it 6. So 25, 6, 30 candies will last. 30 candies will last 6 hours. Because they are eating 5 candies per hour. How do we get 6? By dividing 30 by 3 plus 2. That's exactly what we're going to do. How long will 30 candies last? 30 candies will last. 30 divided by m plus b. If the question was asking, how long will 30 candies last? The answer is m plus b. How long, how long will, how long will C candies last? Well, C candies will last C over M plus B. That's what it is. That's what it is. Let's do one more. The next one is actually uh, age problem. Or the word problem dealing with age. We are told seventy-three. We are told that a girl is G years old. G years old. We are further told that 10 years from now, 10 years from now, her age will be half that of her mom's. Question is, how old is her mom today? How do we set it up? How old is her mom today? As you can see, there are no numbers. These are all variables. That's the difference between algebra and arithmetic. In arithmetic, we deal with nice concrete numbers. In algebra, we do the same thing, but in abstract terms. We do it in abstract terms, we do it conceptually. The very first thing we have to understand is, what is the unknown here? G is not the unknown. G is not the unknown. This 10 years is the known quantity. Instead of 10 years, had they said t, t, t years, t years or n years, it still it would have been known quantity because they're telling you how many years from now. G is not an unknown quantity. The unknown quantity here is what is what they're asking us. How old is her mom? That's the unknown quantity. That's the only unknown quantity. So here's our solution. So the first thing we do is we define our unknown variable. Always define your unknown variable. Unknown here is mom's age when? Mom's age today. It's very very important that you're specific in, in terms of what you're saying here. Don't just say let M represents mom's age. In this, in this problem, it's not enough. In this problem, simply saying that let M represents mom's age, mother's age, is not enough because we're dealing with two different time periods in this problem. So you have to be more specific. Is M going to represent mom's age now? Or is it going to represent mom's age 10 years from now? Big difference. Big difference. So let's define our variable. Let's define our unknown. Let, let M be mom's, mom's current age. We're going to define M as mom's current age because that's exactly what we're looking for which means when we solve for M we won't have to do anything that would be the answer because they're looking for her current age. How old is she today? We're going to pretend that she's M years old. 10 years from now. 10 years from now is what we are told here. 10 years from now. So let's make a note here. 10 years from now. Well, what's going to happen 10 years from now? If you're going to pretend that she's M years old, let's pretend that M is 33. Well, if she's 33 today, 10 years from now, she's going to be 43. M plus 10. 10 years from now, mom is going to be M plus 10. How old is the girl going to be 10 years from now? Well, how do we know? How old is the girl today? I don't know. Do they tell us? Yes, they do tell us. They do tell us how old the girl is today. The girl today is G years old, we are told. If she is G years old today, a girl is G years old today. If they don't say today, it's understood. Because she is. She is, she is, not she's going to be, she is, she is G years old. She is G years old today. 
If she is g years old today, 10 years from now she's going to be g plus 10. Now what happens at that point? Do they tell you something? Well, right there. 10 years from now, her age. Whose age? The girl's age. The girl's age, the girl's age is this, will be half of her mother's age. There you go. This is her mother's age. This is her mother's age. And the girl's age is going to be half this quantity. So if you take this half this quantity, then this quantity, half of this quantity, has to be the same as the girl's age 10 years from now. That's it. We are done. We are done. All you have to do is solve for m. Let's first get rid of the 2 from the bottom. How do we get rid of the 2 from the bottom? By multiplying both sides of the equation by 2. Multiply this side of the equation by 2. Multiply that side of the equation by 2 and now the 2 goes away. And we end up with m plus 10 equals 2 times g plus 10. Open the parentheses. We get 2g plus 20. And here we have m plus 10. We're not interested in m plus 10. We want to solve for m. So let's subtract 10 from both sides. We subtract 10 from both sides. 10 is going to cancel out and we'll be left with m on this side by itself. And m will equal 2g. Positive 20 and the negative 10 is going to give us positive 10. And there is our answer. Mother, mother today, mother today must be 2g plus 10 years old. 2g plus 10 years old. And that is not what I have in my notes. Something has gone bonkers or no? Nope, it's fine. It's fine. Do you know why I got nervous? Because in my notes I have a different answer. And I'll tell you why I have a different answer in my notes. Because technically speaking, this is not enough. We have to go one more step further. Because here we see 2 and here we see 10. We have to simplify it. This, this is not in its simplest form. We will take out a common factor of 2. If we take out a common factor of 2, we end up with g from here and 5 from here. There is the final answer. Mother today is 2 times g plus 5. How are we going to know whether or not our answer is correct? How are we going to know whether or not the answer is correct? By plugging in numbers. Plug in numbers, convert this algebraic problem into simple arithmetic problem, do the problem arithmetically, whatever answer you get arithmetically, if this answer, this quantity gives us the same answer, that's how we know that this is correct. So let's do that, shall we? Enough of the talk, let's do it. How old do you want girl to be? Just make up a number, any number that you want. Makes no difference at all. Having said that, plug in numbers that are, that are smaller, that are nicer, that are friendly, okay? Don't plug in, don't plug in 7,343. That'll be stupid. Plug in something here. I'm going to pretend girl is 12 years old. Girls, if girl is 12 years old today, listen carefully. If girl is 12 years today, 10 years from now, she's going to be 22 years old. She is going to be 22 years old. Are you with me so far? We are told at that point, her mother's age is going to be half her age. If the girl is 22 years old, 10 years from now, mother's age is going to be, mother will be, girl's age is going to be half that of her mother's. Her mother must be 44. Her mother must be, if girl is 22 today, then 10 years from now, her mother is going to be 44, which means her mother today is 34. Are you with me so far? One more time. One more time. We plugged in 12 for G. If you're if going to pretend that girl is 12 years old today, 10 years from now, she's going to be 22 years old. At which point, she's, she is going to be, her mom is going to be, 10 years from now, the girl's age, which is going to be 22, is half her mother's age, which means her mother at that point must be 44, 10 years from now. Well, if mother is 44 years old, 10 years from now, then she has to be 34 today. If this quantity gives us 34, if we plug in 12 for G, and if we get 34, then it's the right answer. Let's find out. We need the room, so we're going to, let's do it here, instead of erasing anything. Let's do it right here. M, M we found out, M we found out, M we are claiming is 2 times G plus 5. G plus 5. G is 12, so it's going to be 2 times 12 plus 5. 12 plus 5 is 17, and 2 times 17 is indeed 34, just as we expected it to be. Mom would have to be 34 years old today if girl happens to be 12 years old today, in order for this whole picture to make sense, in order for all the pieces of puzzle to come together nicely. Bye now.